I wanted to call this podcast, Don't F*** It Up For The Rest Of Us. How rude. <laughs> That's so rude. We can't call it that. No, because if we called it that, then YouTube wouldn't have presented it to you to watch and possibly even your podcast server wouldn't like it. So not allowed to use naughty words like that. So I'm not sure what we're going to end up calling this because that's still my number one title. So what are you trying to get across with your naughty title then? Okay, so it's about cruising specifically, but also traveling generally and how, you know, we're the ambassadors for, the, for our countries, for other travelers and cruisers and for the next people that come along. Right. And I want to say that We've heard a lot of tales about people that behave very badly. And uh, this does impact on those of us that are following. Yeah. OK. All right. I get you. So it sounds like this is going to be one great big rant, isn't it? I think it's a follow the boat rant. It's a follow the boat rant. <laughs> so, um, yes, if you only like positive stories or you, you get offended quite easily, then uh, turn off now. But we will be coming up with suggestions how not to do this, won't we? Uh, will we? Well, oh, there'll okay. be some positives. There. Okay. I hope there'll be at least one or two positives. We'll... Certainly at the end, there will be. Yes, we'll give a positive spin on it somehow. Hello, I'm Liz. And I'm Jamie. Welcome to Follow the Boat, in which we discuss what it's really like to give it all up to live on a boat. And go travelling around the world. We've been doing it since 2006 and we're still at it. Each week we talk about our latest YouTube videos. And about boats, sailing, travel or anything else which floats into our heads. And if you leave a comment we like, we'll give you an answer and a name check. Peace, Peace and, and fair, fair winds. winds. If you are watching this recording on YouTube, you may notice that the background horizon is doing this a little bit, isn't it? Yes. Um, so if you're listening, you won't understand that we're in a little bit of a rolly anchorage, but we are in familiar territory. We are at Madana Bay Marina, where we have been before. There's a couple of reasons for this, but the main one kind of relates really to the podcast that we did last time, which was all about reasons not to buy a boat, <laughs> one of which was, of course, maintenance and constantly fixing things. And everything goes wrong. Everything goes wrong. And that is precisely why we are in this rolly anchorage. Yeah, so, so it's a marina, laughingly called a marina. It's really an anchorage with a boatyard, isn't it? And uh, here we are. Yes, well, we, we hauled out here last year, so we yeah. know there are good services here. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the audio, obviously I haven't listened to it yet, but there's all sorts of commotion going on behind us because they're about to haul out a boat. Now, if you saw our video on this, uh, you'll see that they use this tractor system. So you'll hear lots of beeping and uh, Peter shouting yeah. and uh, yes, lots of things going on behind us. But hey, this is real life. Yeah. This is what it's like. So, you know, for people watching and listening, this is what we uh, deal with. This is how we live. It is how we live. It's how we roll, man. It is, literally. Quite literally. <laughs> Actually, this anchorage, when we first got here, we had some strange weather, didn't we? And, uh, well, our autopilot packed up as we were coming towards Lombok. One of the reasons we're here. Yes. In fact, it was it was well before that, actually. It was uh, across Sumbawa. And, uh, but we also were contending with the after effects of a typhoon that had gone through the Philippines. So we got this very strange weather system. But we ended up in a situation where there was no wind to sail. So we had to motor without an autopilot in what you can only describe really is just washing machine like swell. Yes, it wasn't very nice. It wasn't very nice at all. But um, let's leave that for now and get on with the podcast. Oh, I, sorry. I wanted to get this off my chest. <laughs> oh, all right, go on, I go wanted on. to talk about how, you know, after this horrendous, go and on, it's then. up there in my top three worst passages of all time, getting here. We get here and uh, I text through to someone that had been sitting here for two days and I said, how's the, uh, how are the moorings at Madonna? And he said, horrendous. <laughs> and sure enough, when we came around the corner, there they all were, rocking and rolling backwards and forwards. So anyway, it's calmed down a little today. Right, is that off your chest now? Yes, that's off my chest. OK, so there, there might be another interruption before we actually start. Sorry about all this ridiculous preamble, but we have got the electricians coming and they may well turn up halfway through the podcast, in which case we'll take a break and then come back. To well, them. you know, I thought about that. Yeah. There's two of them yeah. and we've got no outboard because that's the other thing we're getting fixed. Yeah. So I'm going to have to row them. Oh, <laughs> right. Well, let's get on with this quick. OK. Quickly, quickly, okay. quickly. Quickly. So first of all, why are we talking about it? 
So the other day we were having a conversation with a couple of other cruisers who we've got to know well, lovely couple, and they were talking about a particular YouTube channel who shall remain nameless, who had a bad experience in customs and immigration. Yes, we haven't seen this particular um, episode, but uh, this is what they tell us, isn't it? Mm. And as a consequence of this bad experience that they had, they then did a video about it yeah. and ended up slagging off customs and immigration in that particular location, wherever it happened to be. And that was the first thing. And it, it kind of got me thinking, you know, as, as you say, we are ambassadors, mm. irrespective of whether you have a YouTube channel or not. Mm. But especially when you have a YouTube channel, when you have these bad experiences, mm. how much should you be broadcasting and publishing. Mm. I also think people need to think twice before they publish and film because this particular one that was relayed to me, uh, it's entirely the fault of the captain. It was nothing to do with the local authority. It was entirely the captain's fault. We'll go on to this a bit. Uh, not this particular case, but generally. So just think twice before you start ranting because it might actually not be your, uh, their fault at all. It might be your lack of research and uh, buffoonery <laughs> that's caused this problem. And one of the other things I wanted to say about social media and YouTube is that, you know, you've got to be really careful because you could end up in prison by putting things up on social media that the country doesn't like. Mm. It is potentially dangerous. So while it's important, and we always stress this, to be as truthful as you can when you're traveling and sailing, and there are problems, nothing's perfect, just be pretty careful about not insulting because over here in Southeast Asia, you can insult people very easily without realising and it is potentially imprisonable. Mm. Well, a, a good example of people's lack of understanding of local culture and how easy it is to, to offend local people is the classic immigration. Uh, examples and we, we've got plenty we have seen this firsthand yes and we have heard anecdotally how if you are incorrectly attired mm. when you enter immigration in indonesia specifically but also well i'd say in malaysia India, as well malaysia and thailand but I, hold on i oh, would i would say actually that even in the west i imagine that if you are harbour master or customs or immigration sitting in your office in your suit and a bedraggled yachty smelling of fish, wearing a string vest and flip-flops. I mean, I think even they are going to look at you and think, yeah, uh, what's this person all about? Let yes. me show some respect. So, the, But the examples we have in Asia, and as you say, specifically in Indonesia, yes. are where people are um, either turned away because they are not wearing long trousers. I have an example of that. Uh, or they keep getting pushed to the back of the queue. Yeah, so the one I remember, actually, and this was in Thailand, and this was ages ago, and it really annoyed me at the time. <laughs> we were checking in in uh, Shalong Bay, uh, which is now, I had to look at it on Google, it's huge. You know, all those docks and piles, that's now a proper place. You can take your boat right in. I mean, right. it's super duper. It's a beautiful place to check in. Very posh. They've got a fab. Do you remember we went upstairs and you could see all the boats, you could see all the AIS signals. Anyway, it's a great place. And uh, you can check in and do everything in the same place, which I'll tell you for free, it's not normal over here. It's brilliant. You have to go to one building, do the mm. harbour master, immigration, customs and quarantine, do all of that in one go. And they're all beautifully attired in uniforms and it's pristine. So we were dutifully going through the different, you know, the different channels for various things. And a couple of yachties came in. Won't mention the nationality. That's, that's irrelevant. I know it is. <laughs> but... Um, they were, they actually smelt as they came in through the door. They'd obviously been on a long passage and hadn't had a wash, uh, but they hadn't bothered to clean themselves up before coming to immigration, um, both in really tatty old shorts, dirty flip-flops, nasty tops. She had a kind of very sort of strappy top, which you just don't do in Asia. Okay, Thailand's not so bad. Uh, bedraggled hair. Now, they had probably been through a lot. They may have just crossed the Indian Ocean. They may have done a huge passage, but even, you know, we've done that. It's still possible to change your clothes and have a quick, you know, spit and polish and just, you know, clean yourself up. Anyway, they kept being put to the back of the queue and ignored. Do you remember? You don't remember it. Do I, I, I vaguely, <laughs> I vaguely remember this, but I, you know, I have seen it 
done to people and yeah and of course just be ignored i guess they're they're then thinking oh this is such an inefficient yeah. service uh we keep getting pushed back not realizing that it's the way that they are presenting themselves that is the cause for their delays yeah the immigration will make it difficult for you and oh, yeah you can look at all the rules you like online if they don't want you there they won't let you in simple as that mm. if you behave badly or dress wrong it can go right up to just not allowing you in. They have the right to do what they like. It's their country and they represent their country. You might be able to say, but I've got a visa, I've done this. They can still turn you away. So that was my first one. You had one. Uh, uh, I, I've forgotten. <laughs> I, I, I was just conscious that the boat has now moved Yeah, around. we're moving around. So if you're watching on video, the lighting's going to go a bit funny. So sorry about that. I, I think it's the tide, isn't it? It is. It be the tide, yeah. Very strange tides here, by the way. Very strange. Um, Yes. So, oh, yes, I, I've just remembered my example uh, was me in oh, Jakarta. Yes. Uh, we were renewing or extending our visa in Jakarta. It's a very busy immigration office. And it quite clearly says right at the entrance in English that you should wear long trousers. Mm -hmm. I didn't have long trousers. I did on the boat, but I wasn't wearing them. And the security guard stopped me as soon as I tried to step in. And he said, sorry, sir, you need long trousers. And, you know, I didn't contest it because I knew I was in the wrong. Yes, you were in the wrong. But we did have a bit of fun trying to find a pair of trousers that would fit you. It was in your in one of your heavier periods, shall we say. Well, I think that was irrelevant. I think, you know, e even after slimming down, I think <laughs> on the whole, I'm, I'm a lot bigger and taller than most Indonesians. You are. So, yes, I had to go to a shopping mall next door get to a clothes store and buy a pair of trousers. The only trousers I could find, I couldn't even pull them up over my waist. So, they were around your bum. They were literally, yes, around my bum. So I had to wear a long shirt over the top so you couldn't see that, just so that the trouser legs would extend to my ankles. Yes. Oh, I mean, that was, you know, so we took it took it with grace and knew it was our, our fault. Yes. Um, in fact, that whole experience was a good one. I just want to talk about uh, the one that our friend saw in Bali and then come back to that actually because it illustrates a number of things. So in Bali, great friend of ours who, who kind of lives over here was doing um, his visa. Um, so every two months you can update and you can, what's the proper word? I can't remember. You, um, anyway, you, you extend your visa. And he was there, you know, dutifully all in the right stuff. And a couple came in and the bloke had one of those, you know, I think what you call them, those shirts with no no arms t-shirt with no arms a vest, a vest yes right. but a real kind of muscle bound okay and little short shorts and he was some kind of bodybuilder very very all very tight and the girlfriend was in probably even less clothing and uh our friend said that uh, they just you know you just don't you don't wear that anywhere in indonesia let alone in immigration and he watched them be gradually ignored and ignored and ignored until they finally Someone just turned them away and refused to extend their visas because of the way they were dressed. And they had a bit of attitude as well, apparently. Yeah, well, that's, that's not going to help. It's, it then becomes a vicious circle, doesn't yes. it? Because you're getting frustrated because you're not being seen. Yes. Um, the more angry you get, the less you're going to enamour yourself to immigration and the more likely they are to push you back even further. You have to do everything that they say. Mm. And that's why you came back with those ridiculous trousers, but luckily enough with a long shirt over the top. So, you, you know, the Europe, they were able to tick a box. But that was quite a painful experience because we, you know, we didn't do anything right. It was just before Ramadan and they closed for seven days. So we ha it took us all in all about two weeks to get the visa. It was a bloody nightmare, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, that wasn't all our fault. No. But, uh, yes, it, it, it took a while. But and, and so the point here really is that the more people, the more foreigners, tourists go into these offices uh, unsuitably dressed, the more likely these people sitting behind the counter are going to think, well, are all tourists like this? They're less and less enamoured of us and less and less welcoming of us. So it, it behoves us to go in there with a nice broad bean smile slightly deferential, certainly respectful attitude. Yeah. Um, because the more of us do that, it makes it easier for everybody else. But it's really important to do that. We have seen it really totally flouted. Oh, I mean, I've seen people get really angry yeah. in, in, in these offices and you just, 
put your head in your hands and go, no, 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 that's not how you deal with it. Mm. It doesn't matter how much you think you're in the right. Mm, exactly, that's the point. I think one of the problems is that people, uh, travellers generally, and, and uh, a few cruisers in particular, carry their own expectations from their own country and yeah. expect things to be done in the same way. Yeah. And that's where some of the problems start. Yes, yes. But they don't need to start if you do your research and you just read, literally, you said that on the sign was wear long trousers. Mm. And, you know, women have got to be careful as well. You should be covering, certainly in Indonesia, your shoulders and not wearing anything tight. And, you know, you don't wear short shorts. You can wear sort of knee length shorts. They're not that mad. They're not expecting you to wear the hijab. But they do expect you to observe a certain amount of modesty. And that's not difficult to do that. And they make that quite clear. Mm. The other thing I think that's interesting is that you don't perhaps know is that you are supposed to wear shoes and not sandals. Oh, yes, yeah. And in some places in Malaysia, we've been told that we have to wear the right shoes. And it does say that also here, but we've not been, not had that problem not here. Not had that problem here. And by the way, when we say shoes, you can, I've found you can get away with trainers. Yes. It's just that you are covering up your toes. Yes. That, no. That's all they're interested in. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all to do with part of the uh, the modesty, modesty, modest way of dressing over here in this part of the world. Um, do your homework then. Get it all right. Get all the details right. And it's and it can be easy. We've managed to get through in a day before now. And sometimes, as I've said, two weeks. So and, and also don't think you know it all forever because it changes. The rules change often, don't they, on visas on what kind of visa you can get, how long you can get it for, and what is required of you. We've gone in and out of countries from here uh, all the way back to Europe, all the way through the Red Sea, Africa and Middle East and all those countries, India. And the rules have all changed since we were in those countries and they were difficult enough then. But in each country, we looked beforehand about what we should and shouldn't do. So there we go, that's border crossings. Anything else? Oh, yeah, the other thing about visas, don't outstay your visa. Mm. Don't outstay your visa and don't do business in a country if you haven't got a business visa. They get mightily pissed off with people that do both of those things. Um, well, it, but the, the thing is, people do do it. I mean, yeah. you know, we're sitting here saying don't do it and you're probably listening to this saying, well, that's obvious. Yeah. But people do do it. You'd be surprised. Uh, you hear of stories of people in Thailand, you know, they, they spend two years living mm -hmm. on a beach. Mm -hmm. Uh, having outstayed their visa by 18 months or more. Mm. It does happen. And just because you can afford to pay the fine is is, is irrelevant. You mm. shouldn't be doing it and you won't get banned. You know, they'll well, throw look you what, out of the country. Look what happened in Malaysia during COVID when eventually they decided just to clean up. What they wanted to do was to get rid of people who were working in Malaysia uh, on a non-working visa. Yeah. So they decided to just... During it coincided with COVID, but I think it was a useful way of doing it. They pretty much got rid of a whole load of people who had outstayed their visas because of COVID. Yeah. And that was the, one of those situations that we got caught up in, didn't we? Where we did. Know, we were getting kicked out. But the, what the government was trying to do was to remove a lot of the uh, immigrants that were coming in from neighbouring countries and working unofficially. Yes, they were looking to remove them, but they were also, I mean, I did hear this from a Malaysian, that they were also trying to clean out the expat yachty community around the Langkawi area, around that part, part of uh, Malaysia, because a lot of those people were, they're not spending money. So, you know, the, the, the argument is, oh, we come over here okay. and we spend loads of money. So, so the, but the question there is, is that, yeah. going back to the theme of this podcast, is that we saw a lot of, sailors who were kicked out and were quite rightly very angry yeah. about this what's the tipping point at which you can not fight back but argue your case well if you are in the right and yeah. they're in the wrong well none of us were in the right none of us had the right to stay because of covid we were in lockdown so we're all overstaying our visas. Well, no but people would argue that you know safe port for your boat uh you know this international maritime law that everyone should be allowed safe harbour. Well, as they said to all of us at the time, you can just sail back, you can just go back to your country, you can fly back to your country, which all of us could have done. And then it's our country's problem about how we find somewhere to stay. They don't care. Mm. You know, that's the point. There's no point in arguing it. And we learned that in Sabah. Nobody in Sabah 
which is part of Malaysia, was kicked out during COVID, but we had to keep paying to stay and keep renewing visas and so forth. And we all dressed to the nines, behaved perfectly, gave them all the documentation they, they wanted. And it was Alvin in Sabah who actually helped us all remain there. In Langkawi, for some reason, they weren't able to, and they were all booted out, all of those yachties. So I don't know what I'm saying other than just do your absolute best to not put your head above the parapet and don't take the piss out of the country. Because quite a few of those people just went back and forth, back and forth. So really kind of made it their home and were, and were playing the visa game, which yes. is fine. But expect to be, turn, you know, don't be surprised if they decide to change the rules. Yep. <laughs> Here endeth the lesson. <laughs> we're still learning. So that, that, that's out of the way. We've got border crosses out of the way. It is a big one and it is, it is a huge one and there are lots of others. And I bet those of you listening and watching have got other stories on this. I know of other YouTube channels that pissed a lot of people off in COVID. But, oh, uh, go on. Name some names. <laughs> I'm not naming anything. So I won't say anything. But if you feel free in the comments to write anything you like about this particular bit of this podcast. Yes, well, I just wanted to explore that just a little bit Go further. I, be, I talked about it briefly earlier, the responsibility of us YouTubers who are ambassadors. Um, on the one hand, I'm not telling anyone how to run their own YouTube channel. They can do what they want. But I do think it is incumbent upon us to just be a little bit diplomatic and not upset the authorities, even retrospectively after you've left the country, because going back to the theme of this podcast, that has a long-term impact on following cruisers. Mm. And I think that kind of behaviour is utterly selfish, mm. to behave in that way, knowing that you're leaving a wake of uh, upset authorities mm. so that the next bunch of cruisers come in are going to find that uh, these authorities are going to be a little bit, perhaps a little bit harder on them because of the experience of that person that's just left and pissed everyone off. Yeah, I've got an example. Go just on of it. Yeah. One of our friends who runs one of the biggest marinas in Malaysia has no time for one particular nationality because of the behaviour of two or three boats from that nation of that nationality. I'm not going to name it. I don't know whether I should or not. No. You. Right. Uh, and because those particular boats from that country had behaved so badly, he doesn't trust them and doesn't help them in any way. Yeah, there, you go. there we go. Now, whether that's whether you think that's justified or not, who knows? Mm -hmm. But that person has made that decision mm -hmm. and that's to be respected. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what a shame that uh, it's ended up in that situation. But there it is. Yeah. So that's a perfect example of yeah, just just behave, behave, everybody. Let's all try and be, behave. Actually, we can talk about boat yards and marina behavior. Can oh, we? yes. If you find this topic interesting and would like to continue the conversation, come and join the Follow the Boat Discord community. Look for the link in the description. It's free. Uh, we've just swapped sides, by the way. If you're watching the video version of this, we've just swapped sides because the sun is just causing all kinds of problems. There's a lot of noise as well, yeah. isn't there? Hopefully you won't see this. I'll, I'll work my magic on the audio and I'll get rid of all the grinding and the sanding because actually just here, uh, they make boats, so they, they're actually manufacturing boats on the beach, right by our little spot. So, yeah, a bit of atmosphere for you. Definitely. This is a reality, isn't now, it? Now, you said, uh, we were talking about immigration customs, but yeah. then we were going to go on to boatyards, because yeah. that's a really good, so many examples of where we have seen cruisers cocking things up, yeah. both for themselves and then in the longer term, messing it up for everyone else. And the, the few examples we have, all, all I can say is I admire the patience I of the local people who deal with these bloody idiots. Yeah, I mean, you all know that we did a, a whole year in a boatyard doing a refit. And throughout our adventures over here, we're in boatyards and marinas quite a lot, dealing with local uh, workers, um, skilled workers. So we've got a lot of experience. We know what we're talking about on this particular one. Um, the first thing, obviously, which should be obvious to everybody, is don't get angry and red and swear and shouty. But we see it, don't we? Yes. <laughs> and I, I, th I think the problem is that people are coming over with their, their way of doing things from the West. Yeah. 
and expecting them to be done in the same way. I mean, we've we've discussed this a number it's of times. Adding for an item, yeah. The um, message doesn't get across to some people, but it, it really doesn't. Yeah. So obviously, I think it's a well-known fact. If it isn't, and they haven't done their research, people should know that if you raise your voice in Southeast Asia, certainly from Thailand onwards, you've lost. You've basically lost any respect you may have had and uh, they will not take you seriously. So the moment you get angry and raise your voice, forget it. You ain't, nothing's going to happen. So that's a fairly obvious thing not to do. And yet people still do it. And the result is people losing all their workers. Yeah, I'm thinking of one example where uh, a cruising couple that we know, uh, they, I think he made the mistake of trying to tell his workers how to do a job. Well, that's the other thing. And yeah. we've seen that so many yeah. times. You know, the way that the local people here work may be different to you, but you've just got to step back and let them get on with it, unless they're really cocking up. But even if you try and show them the correct way of doing it, there is a certain way in which you do it. I know, and you are dealing with people. I mean, the carpenters that we had working on our boat, they were born with chisels in their hands. They've done it all their lives. They do know they do know what they're doing and they do build boats here. So it's very arrogant to come along and tell them what to do. And people telling people how to do steel work, welding, the correct way to hold this, that and the other. And I find it really embarrassing watching watching cruisers telling them what to do. It's awful. And, and they walk off the job, the workers, they don't care about the money. They that's, don't care about losing the money. They don't care. That's they, that's a really good point. Yeah. That is a really good point. Is Money is almost irrelevant to yeah. them. To them, it is a job. And that's, it, it's the action of doing the job that's as important as the money that they get at the end of it. Yes. Now, we know this because every few months when we were doing our refit, we'd give the workers a bonus. Yes. Then you wouldn't see them next day. So rather than them thinking uh, this money is a, uh, a thank you from Liz and Jamie because I've been working hard, I'll continue to work hard. Yeah. The opposite happens. Well, they, go, hey. they go and bugger off and <laughs> spend it on booze or gambling or or maybe their children's uh, school fees. Who knows? But uh, yes, that that happened quite a lot. Yeah, it? it's not it's not the cure all. Money is definitely not the cure all for these types of people. Perhaps in tourist places it is, but in the boatyard not. Um, and there was, um, so you were talking about the patience that some of the managers have, but I do remember at one stage in the boatyard where we were, the manager saying to me, or actually the wife saying, we're thinking of not having yachts anymore because they cause so many problems for us. It's much easier if we just fill the boatyard with fishing boats. Yes, yes. In that particular boatyard, uh, actually after we left, but we were privy to a lot of what was going on because of the people that we knew there, there was one particular couple who caused no end of headaches for the marina manager and the staff there. Yes. We met these this yes. couple. I've got to say, they are two of the most ghastly people ever. I have ever met. They were so arrogant and rude. And it was the same problem. They went to this boatyard expecting things to be done their way and when things weren't done their way they it wasn't just shouting it got really quite nasty they were inexplicably rude to everybody uh, they shut themselves off in the boatyard brought their own workers in refused to pay uh, refusing to pay was a big one of it um, rude to all of the people the owners the managers the workers other yachts I don't know, you can't even, that is a most unusual situation, but awful. And it's not us just being all gossipy. Mm. Uh, th th this goes back to the theme of this podcast is that that kind of behaviour is going to make it bad for the next load of yachts that come in. It, there's going to be a higher chance that workers won't want to work yeah. on their boat. Yeah. There's a higher chance that rates are going to be put up, yeah. that they'll make you wait longer. They'll make life more difficult for you. Yeah. So that kind of behaviour is disgusting and dis. Bickable. Yes, it is. I mean, that, that actually, funnily enough, I do remember when we first started doing our YouTube channel, uh, this guy had turned up and uh, he bumped into me on the pontoon and he said, oh, I know you. I watch your YouTube channel. I said, oh, come on board, have a beer. We had a beer. Anyway, a few months later, he fell in with these other two that we were oh, discussing no. and he point blank refused to talk to me no yeah because this couple had a knack of turning 
people. But also he, I think, also ended up at the boatyard. Right. And I think he held me partly responsible for their cock-ups they were having in the boatyard right. because we had recommended this boatyard to yeah. people and said what a great time we had. His experience was completely the opposite. Well, the reason why his experience was the opposite was because of the behaviour of these two people in particular. Yes, and you go in with a defensive attitude, imagining everything is going to go wrong, and then things do go wrong. So, you know, I'm really glad to say that plenty of other people have been to that boatyard and loved it and made good friends and had great work done, and they go back and back. And the really interesting thing is some people do badmouth it, go on about it, and yet they return every year. <laughs> what is that? What's that all about? Well, you go, I mean, people... <laughs> People like like to moan, don't they? They, they, they do, do like to moan about something, anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. So, so the the, the obvious um, answers there are that if you if you behave like that, they may close the boatyard to yachts. That's the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. Prices will go up. Okay, the prices go up anyway, but they'll go up worse. They'll not allow certain boats in. You know. So there's lots of things that can happen if you behave if you behave like that. And be assured that those boatyards all talk to each other. Mm -hmm. It's like the marina managers, they all know. So if you fuck up, again, you're gonna to have to bleep that, they will tell the other managers and owners of the marinas and boatyards in that area. And you will, when you arrive, you will already have a little note above your head mm -hmm. saying, watch this one. So there you go. Anything else on boatyards? Oh, payment. Go there on. was one guy, we knew very well, Australian guy, actually a friend of ours, who, Nationality uh, not relevant. I know it's not it's not relevant at all. But he um, he's one of these ones that whinged all the time on Facebook and around the table of bollocks about this yard and yet kept going back. And I took him to task when I saw him face to face and, <laughs> he, and then he backed down immediately. Paper card. Um, anyway, he uh, he wanted to be splashed on a particular day at a certain time and was ready to go, but he hadn't paid his bill. And so the manager said, Well, you need to pay your bill before bill before we splash you. Well, of course I'm going to pay it. Absolute storming, bloody argument, went all around the yard, everyone's getting involved. And I think somebody asked me at once, no, I think the manager said to me, what do you think? And I said, no, don't splash him. You can't, you can't afford to do it. You will not get splashed anywhere unless your bills are up to date. In the, in the marina in KK, they used to bolt the boats to the deck, didn't they? They did. <laughs> yeah, and quite rightly so. Yeah. You know, you, you don't expect to go shopping and uh, walk out the supermarket with your trolley full of food and say, I'll, I'll pay this bill next week. It just doesn't work like that. And don't, I think one of the problems is that Southeast Asians are so nice. Yes. You know, they're so pleasant and accommodating, especially to the whims of us Westerners, that I think people do try and take advantage of it. They do. Not realising that behind those smiles, quite often... These uh, Indonesians here, for example, are uh, perhaps cursing and swearing in their own language at, the, at our behaviour. Mm. You know, you may think that they are being all nice and accommodating to mm. you, not realising that you're actually doing some damage that you can't see, mm. but you should be fully aware of. So if you behave well with them, if you're honest, trustworthy and, uh, and prove to them that you are trustworthy, we've been to places where we do that and we've gone, gone off and haven't paid and have sent, you know, um, sent payment later. I'm, I'm thinking of the Toggians. We stayed at that place, stayed at an, on an island next to an island resort and used all their facilities, but their network was down. They said, oh, it's okay. Just when, when you leave, when you get um, connection, just pay us. But I'm sure that wouldn't have been the case with other, with other people. We made a real effort to ingratiate ourselves and be respectful there. Mm. So it, it works for, in your favour. You know, being nice works in your favour. <laughs> Actually, you mentioned talking about paying bills and paying. Mm. Um, another area in, in which I think cruisers need to be a bit careful in their behaviour because of the way it could affect future cruisers is um, overpaying for services oh, God, and yes. tipping. I'll give a good example here. A boat went ahead of us on a particular passage, got to a location, found someone that could supply them with diesel and paid, first of all, he paid over the odds per litre on the diesel. And then when he sent me a message said, oh, I gave him a tip of X hundred thousand uh, rupiah for his services. And when I looked at all the costs he was spending, I thought, 
that's ridiculous. He could afford it, though, mm -hmm. because he wasn't actually a full-time cruiser. He was still working. He had a good salary. So for him, it made no odds what he was paying. He was literally just happy that he'd got his diesel and was paying for that convenience. Consequently, when we turned up at the same place two months later, I got in touch with the same person. And the quote that he gave me was astronomical. And I replied to this guy saying, the, these, this is more than double what you pay at the uh, gas station, at the petrol pump. Oh, well, but it's blah, 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 he replied. The point is, is that he had just got a little taste of earning some good cash from a cruiser, mm. which uh, in turn cocked it off for us. Yeah, so we're not being cheapskate here. We are all for paying the correct amount, yes. the absolute, and a little bit over the odds for the, for, for the doing it. Yep. And we do know that obviously most of the time, most of us are richer than they are. So paying a little bit, don't mind. Don't mind tipping in restaurants and things. But paying stupid money is ridiculous and you do become cash cows. Yes. And um, so some of these areas that are quite remote suddenly start being like the tourist areas and charging stupid money um, because some idiot has paid them stupid money. Reminds me actually of a um, YouTube episode I saw yesterday, not going to say where, and the bloke was doing things around, he was scootering around doing this, that and the other. And he kept tipping people. Somebody showed him the way to somewhere and, and, and he, he followed that person on the bike. And when he got then got to the place he wanted to go to, he says to camera, I offered him, I, I gave him some money. And the guy said, no, 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 I don't need money. And he said, well, I gave it to him anyway. And he does, this happens two or three times throughout the episode. And I'm imagining that I'm in London. Someone wants to know where the 78 bus goes and how, where's the bus stop and I walk them around the corner and show you go on that side of the road that's and if someone tries to give me some money I think I'd be actually a little bit offended. I do think though that it is natural for some people to tip it's just in their nature you take uh, the USA North Americans for example they are a tipping nation certainly compared to the UK. Oh god we're real cheapskates aren't we? I don't know. Well, well we you know we tip in restaurants uh, but uh, there's definitely a, a tipping mentality. But, you know, do you do you need to tip someone who's just shown you directions going yeah. down the street? I think even Americans wouldn't do that, would they? Would they? If someone get told, told you the way to somewhere, would you give slip them a few dollars? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. I don't think it's necessary anyway, because I, I think all you're doing is encouraging people to think that they're going to get money for everything. You're setting a precedent. Yeah. You must literally set mm. a precedent for the people that follow. Yes. It's so, a fine, tipping's a fine, there's a fine line there, isn't there, I think. Yeah, there are times when I do tip and times, um, and I tip generously and times when I don't. It's just how you feel, I think. Mm. But yeah, don't set the precedent of overpaying ever. That's, that's not clever. Um, pay the right price that everybody's happy at. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for interrupting, but while I've got you here, if you like what we do and you want to support us and become a Patreon or join us on FTB Mates or even drop a quid in the rum fund, go to followtheboat.com forward slash pub. Of course, come to the pub. Before we go on, I just want to talk a little bit about manners and how customs are very different over here in Southeast Asia in some respects to other areas of the world. And they do actually differ even from country to country. And I think it's important that we learn some of these before we even get to the countries, don't you think? Yes, I think I'm, I'm thinking of Thailand in particular, where it's rude to uh, show your feet and yeah. the soles of your feet and to point with your feet. Yeah. I remember when we went to a Buat ceremony, which is the induction into the uh, Buddhist monk ceremony that young men do. Mm. And we ended up in the top of the hill on the temple and we had to sit there for over an hour uh, while they went through the ceremonies and we had to sit on the floor and I was so uncomfortable. All I wanted to do was to sit with my legs stretched out <laughs> and my feet pointing up and that, that would have been one of the worst places to be showing the soles of my feet and pointing oh. my feet. It was so uncomfortable. The point was though, I was fully aware that this was a no-no especially in a temple. Yes, and um, I didn't go to that, I'm really relieved to say. <laughs> I was away and didn't have to do that because women, and I, someone told me about this over here in Indonesia, in fact, it was someone Gilly it was Joe who said that women should sit with their knees together and their feet tucked underneath them. That's the way that demure women sit. 
So I immediately rearranged my open cross legged and uh, sat differently. But um, obviously you don't have to be that strict, but just be aware that that's how people are. And if you're in a situation, obviously like a temple, anywhere holy, or in a city particularly, rather than on the beach, uh, or somebody's house, just uh, behave, behave appropriately. Behave appropriately and dress appropriately as well. Yes, I mean, we, we've covered that, but it's massively important. Um, interesting in Malaysia, and you hate me doing this, is pointing. Because if you point with your forefinger, that's considered extremely rude. So what you do is you point, instead of pointing with a finger, we've even got the pointy emoji, haven't we? No, you point with your thumb. You hate it. I hate it. And the, the thing that I really <laughs> annoys me is when you ask directions from a local and but they won't commit to a point. I want them to point in that direction over there. You know, the supermarket is over there. But no, it's a kind of general sort of waving of the hands with the closed fingers yes. and pointing sort of with the thumb. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those cultural differences I still struggle to get my head around because I don't see that as rude. Interestingly, you notice politicians over the last 20 years, how they no longer point with their finger. Is that uh, true? Yeah, they, they, you'll see less direct pointing because, you know, body language specialists have said that this is rude, insulting and condescending to be pointing, you know, pointing right. at your audience. It's like you're telling them off. Yes, yeah, so, so we're so international now, you've got to be aware of of how it affects half the world mm. so yeah yeah that's that's a good one and um, the other one that um, I knew but hadn't really thought about recently I discovered this when I was looking this up the other day is you shouldn't pat anyone on the head even yes. children yes um, so you know we do it all the time in the UK and I bet you do it in America and Australia and in these other countries you pat someone on the head as a, as a sign of affection yeah here it's extremely rude and disrespectful it's doesn't it have religious connotations about you know top top of the head being the closest point to God? I think uh, I think it? someone explained that to me once. I'm not I'm not sure. It yeah, seems but, to be across the board all over these countries. Yes, you're right. And as you say, it you just it's so natural to want to ruffle the hair yeah. of a of a child. Um, we all do it. Yeah. But um, yeah, and again, you know these customs, you can find out about them before you go to these countries, and they're not illegal. No. No. Nope. You're not going to get arrested for this kind of behaviour. Yeah, if you walk into someone's house with your shoes on, they're not going to immediately march you down to prison. No. But, but. But, yes, it is good to just be primed with a few of these basics, just to ingratiate yourself just that little bit more gently uh, into the lo with the local people. Yes, because you can look ignorant, you can look disrespectful, um, and they, it just adds to the general feeling amongst the local people that foreigners are like that and uh, are not, you know, not worth the ground they walk on, whatever, mm. however you want to say it. Okay, so one little thing after that we do need to talk about, because it's come up recently, mm -hmm. is uh, hiring mopeds and scooters. Don't ride scooters naked. Is that what you were going to say? No. Oh, I love riding scooters naked. Did you know that liking and subscribing on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts helps us to get noticed? Go on, give us a helping hand. No, we're not talking about naked scooter riding. That, uh, oh. I thought that was a given. Don't do that. No, we're talking about um, scooter hire, motorbike hire. It's not going to the fairground. It's not having a great old time doing wheelies and whizzing around the roads and um, behaving badly on a, on a motorbike or a scooter. We do know people who d have died. The figures for tourists dying in these countries is high. Uh, I mean, that's really obviously the worst case scenario. People can really damage themselves. So regard scooter hire as you would in at home, wherever you're from. I mean, I we travel with our own helmets. Quite often the helmets they give you here are not good enough. So wear helmets and be careful and learn the rules of the road because they're oh, yeah. so different. They are different. Yeah, the, the helmet wearing one is an interesting one because uh, I, I think, you know, when you're in the tropics, perhaps you're on the scooter in the blazing sun and it's nice to have the breeze on you and you're driving perhaps a little bit slower around these roads compared to the west. So you might think, well, you know, I don't need a helmet. Uh, but the, I think now a helmet, at least for the driver, is a legal requirement yes. it, it, across all of these Southeast all Asian them, countries yes. now. You'll see the local people here in Indonesia, not a legal requirement for their passenger, 
but oh. for the driver, they must be wearing a helmet. Now, we saw in Phuket, for example, so many people getting pulled over, mm. locals and tourists, for not wearing a helmet. Mm. So just save yourself the hassle and wear a helmet. Yes, and so it's it's become so bad the way that tourists behave on bikes in Bali that mm. they're just about to ban them. Yes. So there you go, that's the behaviour that affects the rest of us. So they're going to ban all foreigners, tourists, expats, people who live there who are not Indonesian born from hiring scooters. It's about to, it's about to be enacted, uh, motorbikes and cars, unless you do so through a recognised tourist company. So they've got all the insurance correct and you're paying the right price, all of those things big crackdown in Bali. Yeah, and as you say, that is as a result of many, many years, decades almost, of tourists coming in and behaving in the way that they feel is okay, uh, not being respectful. And quite often it is, it's not naked scooter riding, but it is inappropriately dressed yeah. behaviour on scooters. Just a bikini, just some swimming trunks, flip-flops, um, yeah. making loud noises, drunk. Drunk, drunk scooter driving. Yeah. Yeah, so, and obviously Bali's just had enough and they've said, we've got to stop this. Um, and, you know, kind of good on them, really. In fact, um, I was reading in, I think it was, I can't remember which paper, Bali Times or something, um, but it, it's all over the place. Bali is having a real rethink on tourism because they've got to the stage now with tourists disregarding their culture, behaving badly, drinking too much, sex on the beach, all of this sort of thing. They've got so fed up with it, they now want to change the tourist, the kinds of tourists that get there. Yeah. So they want people with a bit more money who are going to spend money wisely and carefully, not go out on a piss all night in cheap places for cheap beer, um, and just regard the island as a beautiful place, which of course it is. And to be honest, we haven't gone to Bali. We haven't gone to Bali precisely yeah. because of this reputation that it has. It of and understand, of course, we've been to so many Indonesian islands. We're a little bit spoilt, I suppose, in that we've had access to the less touristic islands. So the idea of going to Bali, surrounded by bars, drunk tourists. Um, I was going to say girls in bikinis, but for some reason, <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, so we we have real no desire to go there. I, I, I can't bear looking at the faces of the locals because you know that behind those eyes they are just thinking what a load of twats. Mm. Um, you just know that that's going on and we've been told that as well. I know there are parts of Bali that are not like that yes, so I'm it would sure. be nice to see those. Yes I'm sure there are many many decent places in Bali I'm sure uh, but it's certainly dropped down on our list and and the proof is in the pudding with what the local government is doing there now yeah. with these new rules and regulations. So there is clearly an issue. It's not just us being sensitive. No, no. They're, they're bringing in a good tourist guide, which they're going to hand out to everybody who gets off a plane when they arrive. This is how we do things here and this is how we expect you to behave. They've got It's got so bad that that's what they now have to do with people. Please read this. I just hope people do read it and take it seriously. <laughs> Can I just make a comment? I did laugh. I actually read the contents of that handout that there. Oh, did you? Yes. And one of them is about recycling uh, plastic, <laughs> and not rubbish. And I, and I did sort of not take umbrage, but I did think that was a bit of a joke. Um, good on them for, you know, trying to address the situation. But uh, telling tourists to not litter, I think, is um, not really hitting them. Yes, Western not really tourists. Getting to the problem there. No, it's not. But. I've, I've, Local tourists, perhaps it might, it might work with. Yes. I mean, most yeah. Western tourists don't litter anyway. Yeah, so there we go. Look out. So if you're in a tourist area that is a bit like Bali and is getting worse and worse, you might end up finding that that's, they're going to close out the people that they don't want there mm. because of behaviour, as we said. So I've got a couple of points about Malaysia. Did you, did you, uh, did you have anything particular? Because I wanted just to... Um, just to point out that Malaysia, it's, it sounds quite a Western country in many ways, and it's quite forward thinking in many ways, but it's also deeply religious com country. And you can get thrown in prison for saying, behaving lewdly, you know, being half undressed, they don't like that, uh, for being drunk, um, for being obscene and, and um, causing a phrase and all that sort of thing. They will throw you in prison. They don't care who you are, where you're from, and whether it's okay in your country. 
There are definite parts of Malaysia where you have to behave correctly. And not say the wrong thing. Yeah. Only the other mm. day, headline news, a Singaporean comedian who did a stand-up show in the States, I think it was, wasn't it? Mm. Said some disparaging marks about, remarks about Malaysia and its relationship with Singapore. Yes. Well, the Malaysian government is now asking Interpol yeah. to try and locate this comedian because of what she said. I think she took the piss out of their airlines, didn't she? Because of the, the, some of the airlines that have, uh, the airplanes that have gone down. A, a sensitive subject. A very course. sensitive subject. So you're not safe even once you've left. So this is a message to those of us that use social media and YouTube. Please just be respectful. You may not always agree with them, mm. but be respectful about disagreeing. I, it's fine to disagree, but just I, be respectful. I think that's a good point, though. You say you may not agree with it. And, and I agree with you on that mm. point in that it, is, it can be frustrating. Mm. We are from countries where we are used to freedom of speech. Mm. We can say anything and write anything. Behave pretty much any way we like, yeah, wear we, what we like. With, without repercussion, but not in these countries. No. So it's quite simple. If you don't like these rules and regulations, don't visit. Mm. If you do, just do your research beforehand and just be a little bit sensitive to mm. it. Because indecent exposure in Malaysia means something very different to what it does in the West. You know, you could just be going shirtless or wearing a strappy top and, uh, you know, that's it. It's indecent exposure. So just do be careful. And can, can I just counter this with a li yeah. my little uh, walk on the beach anecdote? <laughs> because if you're thinking, well, these sound like very uh, hardcore places with their rules and regulations. Mm. I was walking the dogs along the beach on my own this time. That's other... here in Lombok in Indonesia. Yes. Uh, so I had three or four dogs with me. And this little three, four-year-old boy appeared. His mum and dad were on the sun lounge chairs. And uh, he was very interested in the dogs. And he was shouting hello. And I was shouting, you know, Apakaba, how are you? And we had a funny little dialogue going, but he wanted to know about the dogs. So I told him the dogs' names. He didn't think anything more of it. And I walked off. Now, understand that a lot of local people are very wary of dogs here. There's a lot of wild dogs, so you'll see that they tend to stay away from them. Well, next thing I know, I felt this thing touch my hand and I looked down and that little four-year-old boy had followed me, grabbed my hand, and now I'm walking down the beach with the dogs holding the hand of this little four-year-old boy. Oh, God, some strange, hairy foreigner holding the child. I thought it, it really touched me. I... I I loved that moment, yeah. you know, and uh, we were towards the end of the beach anyway. There's nowhere to go. The parents could clearly see us. But the point is, is that the parents did not have a problem mm. because they know their child is safe. They felt safe with me. Uh, if that had happened in the UK, can you imagine the repercussions? You'd that? have been clapped in irons immediately. You'd have been branded a pedo. Do you like our coffee mugs? You can get your own from our shop. Find them at funnotheboat.com forward slash shop. Before we finish, there's just one more example of bad behaviour and being caught out. This is in Malaysia and it was it, it went round the world. A group of young kids, teenagers, got to the top of Mount Kinabalu in uh, Sabah, which we know very, very well. And when they got to the top, they took their clothes off, took a photograph of each other and posted it on their social media while they were still in Malaysia. This was then seen by the Malaysian authorities. Believe you me, they do look, they're looking all the time. They found these photographs and immediately arrested the five people who had bared their bodies on top of the mountain. And it was declared by the people of Sabah that it was they that had caused the earthquake because mm. Kinabalu is a holy mountain. And by behaving so disrespectfully on top of this mountain to the mountain, they had caused this earthquake. Now, you may not agree with that. You may think that's silly, but this is what they think in Sabah. So they were fined and given prison sentences, which eventually they didn't serve. But there you go. Don't put it on social media and have respect. I think that wraps it up perfectly as, as, as how to behave and not behave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think your little story of holding hands with a little boy on a beach is really sweet. And that's probably the image I want to take away at the end of this, don't you? Yeah, 
Yeah, because we we've kind of got to know the people that sort of not live on the beach but work on the beach the fishermen a lot of people come down they're looking for their their dinner when the tide goes out picking up shells so there's a lot of people there and i think they're starting to get used to us walking down the beach with our dogs um, and again not being disrespectful although we are walking with dogs which a lot of them struggle to get their heads around um, but you know we're not causing a scene we're not being uh unruly we're not even particularly underclothed. We're we're reasonably covered as well because this is quite a Muslim island, so you know, shorts but shirts and sleeves and whatnot. So yeah, we get on very well with them. And don't get us wrong, we love Southeast Asia and we would say to everybody, come here. It is the most stunning, eye-opening, engrossing, extraordinary part of the world. It has so much to offer and so much for people to discover. Don't let us put you off. I hope we haven't. Oh, I don't think so. My concern is that we come across as a bit a, a bit superior and yeah. telling telling people how to behave and what to do. All we're trying to do here really is just prime you if you are going to visit these countries is just do your research beforehand. Yes. Um, and actually that applies to the sailing itself, you know, understand the currents and the winds because we get a lot of people turning up who are surprised by the conditions out there and uh, you know it's all out there all of this information is out there mm -hmm. if you can just do a little bit of research before you come to these places yeah make it your business to learn and we've learned as we've as we've gone you know we've made mistakes and we've learned oh no, i can't do that right mm -hmm. okay so we're just trying to impart to you what we've learned we're not trying to be superior and sorry if we sound that way mm -hmm. yeah so research always smile smiling is a big one big help helps a lot don't shout in any of these countries don't shout you've lost immediately and learn a few 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 words we always use please thank you how are you a few numbers that sort of thing and the moment you speak a little even a little bit of the language people love you for it they it, really do even if they respond by laughing at your bad pronunciation that you're just showing a little bit of willing yeah so come come to southeast asia but behave yourself. <laughs> Righty-ho, uh, that wraps that up. And of course, just as we've finished, all the noises have stopped. They've stopped grinding, they've stopped hauling out boats, the fishermen have stopped. Maybe we should re-record this. Oh, I know. <laughs> no, I think we've got lots to do today. So uh, thank you for listening. And, yep. um, Peace and fair winds. Bye.